dragons, beautiful men with long hair, a battle between good and evil. No, this isn't Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Zale, which appears like a phantasmagoric fever dream to viewers uninitiated to either Yu-Gi-Oh! or the world of anime as a whole. For audiences who clicked on this at 1am, stoned out of their minds, or for the poor editing class that I have unfortunately taken hostage, Yu-Gi-Oh! is like Pokemon, but with cards, and it's kind of boring if you just focus on the game mechanics, so we're not gonna do that. Sometimes there's guns, but we also don't talk about that. Or this. Anyways. Yu-Gi-Oh! Zale was edited by Kajino Masafumi, who edited for all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series from the last 34 episodes of Duel Monsters all the way to Vrains. The episodes we'll be focusing on today will be episodes 56 and 117. Hold up! Why are you intellectualizing some kid show that ended like 10 years ago? Because I'm in cams. We intellectualize all sorts of unnecessary sh- ah! Another note. The episodes I'm focusing on are from the Japanese version of Zale. The dub version cuts out a few minutes from each episode and censors certain aspects of the show. If you'd like to learn more about the Zale sub versus the dub, please check out my research paper in the description below. That's right, I've held more than one class hostage over this show. Now, a little bit more context. Christopher V. Arclight is a typical white-haired anime boy that probably came from a factory somewhere out in the middle of the Pacific, since there's so many white-haired anime boys out there. He was once a mentor to Kaito Tenjo, but abandoned him in the rain once he found out Kaito's father, Dr. Faker, cancelled his own dad's life subscription. Now he's back and wants revenge. Also, his father turned out to be alive, but that's a story for another time. He's also less hotter. Kaito Tenjo here is an 18-year-old short king who kills people for a living to save his sick little brother Haruto. He's battling Christopher for answers, and also because he has a score to settle. I mean, wouldn't you also want some closure to the guy who randomly upped and left without an explanation? In all seriousness, episode 56 is an episode based on Kaito's interpersonal struggles with his former mentor, featuring spectacular shots of an intergalactic battle and extreme wide shots to demonstrate the distance, both physically and mentally, between these two duelists. The focus on Christopher's monster, the Death Star-like Dyson Saphir, and Kaito's own dragon, Galaxy Eye's Photon Dragon, turns their battle into an operatic spectacle. In episode 117, things appear to have improved between Kaito and Christopher. This time, it is about Christopher saving Kaito from their opponent's poison. The shots are closer in this episode, providing more of an intimate, or claustrophobic, experience. By putting these two episodes in dialogue with one another, it is evident that Kajino wanted to demonstrate the changes between Kaito and Christopher's once distant relationship. Communicating these changes via contrasting colors, shot choice, and parallel match shots, Kajino illustrates the personal growth of the characters and their relationship with one another. Compared to the colors of 117, 56 looks like a nighttime carnival. Things are vivid, bright, and red to highlight Kaito's stress. In contrast, flashbacks are dull, sepia to almost monochrome toned, similar to noir films. The tragedies depicted in these scenes, from Christopher's brothers being taken away to Kaito's abandonment, contrast the pure fury that fills the present duel. The color red takes the center stage when Kaito has a typical anime protagonist power-up moment, where he summons Neo Galaxy Eye's photon dragon and a red aura envelopes him. Galaxy Eye's blasts are red, the Dyson Saphir's explosions are red, the floor is red, and then we are brought back to the dull tone past, the sounds of battle drowned out by rain. <laughs> This is the moment, Kajino points out to us. The moment Kaito has been waiting for. Red slowly fades away afterwards, returning to the rich hues of the space-time carnival that we first find ourselves in. 56 culminates in Christopher collapsing on his brother's bed and losing his soul as punishment. Kaito, meanwhile, resolves to carry on his mentor's feelings, creating an ending for their conflict. Moving on to 117, we take an opposite approach. Instead of space, 
Kaito and Christopher are in the Arctic, battling a ninja mosquito alien. This kind of stuff is normal in the Yu-Gi-Oh world. Also, Christopher is alive again because his mutated dad decided that revenge was for chumps. The palettes are toned down, from dull grays to blues. However, the shots from Kaito's point of view are further heightened from this dullness, from the blurs to the briefly inverted colors that signify his pain. Unlike 56, 117's flashbacks are more vivid in comparison. Then, Kaito has a Dragon Ball power-up moment, but instead of playing with color contrast, Kajino contrasts brightness and darkness. After the defeat of the opponent, however, the tone of the story doesn't calm down. Instead, it further increases as they send off the protagonist to Astral World to reunite with his own mentor figure. Leaving us off with a cliffhanger ending instead of a downer ending, 117 serves as a stepping stone to a story with significantly higher stakes instead of serving as closure. There are 36 extreme wide shots in 56, and 18 extreme wide shots in 117. Even so, due to 117's location, the extreme wide shots appear to be of a smaller scale than 56's. Where 56 features an expansive space field, 117 features a narrow corridor where the shots are framed by walls on each side. First off, 56 hammers into our mind that Darth V's Death Star is huge. This shot reappears multiple times. There are even a few homage shots to Star Wars. For more on that, please check my Tumblr post in the link below. 56's extreme wide shots demonstrate the vast distance of space and the distance that Kaito and Christopher have separated from one another, physically and mentally. Christopher is on a quest for revenge to get his family back. Kaito is killing people to save his brother. They've both changed for the worst. 56's extreme close-ups to their eyes, in contrast, demonstrates the power of the gaze. Fury, hatred, regret. By allowing the viewer to focus on the character's eyes, we are given a window into their souls. What is particularly interesting at the very end of 56 is Christopher's quote-unquote death. He enters a room in a series of mediums and close-ups, then collapses on his brother's unconscious body. The extreme wide that follows gives the audience a sense that they've served their purpose and will now be abandoned. In their father's eyes, they are no longer of use. 117, meanwhile, takes place in a corridor in the Arctic. Kaito and Christopher have mended their ties and have built a dimensional portal to help the protagonist, Yuma, reunite with his own mentor. As they duel against their opponent, poison is slowly coursing through Kaito's veins. The walls that frame each shot increases the sense of claustrophobia we feel as the poison begins to take its toll through Kaito. The characters are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Either they duel while Kaito's poisoned, or they surrender, and the protagonist will never reunite with Astral. Due to the looming presence of the walls, even the extreme wide shots feel smaller in scale. There is less of a focus on Dyson Sphere in this episode, mitigating the spectacle of its size. Instead, there are more medium shots between Christopher and Kaito, demonstrating their bonds of trust. Christopher works to rid Kaito of the poison, and his reaction shots highlight his inner thoughts. Meanwhile, the blurred Dutch angle shots puts the audience in Kaito's mind. He's trying to fight the poison, but his blurry vision and hallucinations aren't particularly helping. The claustrophobic experience is alleviated after the defeat of their opponent. The world opens up with light as the portal activates and sends Yuma off into Astral World. Thirdly, what I think ties these two episodes together are the match shots and overlays at the climax of each duel. First, the overlays. In 56, it is Christopher's reflection on destroyed ideals of trust and friendship. Serving as the epilogue to his accusation that the protagonist will one day too be hunted by Kaito, the overlay demonstrates the depth of Christopher's fury. Before this duel, he is portrayed as a stoic character working behind the scenes. Now, on the battlefield, it's time for him to finally release all of his repressed rage. 
Basically, Christopher is like one of those well-behaved kids you sign up for sports, but the moment they get on the field, they unleash carnage. Then you're stuck with wondering what kind of monster you raised. In 117, the overlay shot is from Yuma's point of view. He marvels at how Christopher and Kaito have bonds of absolute trust, thinking back to his own relationship with his mentor. We get a quick digest of Christopher and Kaito's flashbacks in 56, demonstrating how much they've changed over the years. Lastly, what I think truly elevates the Christopher Kaito experience are the parallel match shots. Kaito's match shot in 56 is for closure. He was abandoned in the rain and now he's returned for closure. We change from a dull and dark night to a bright star-filled battlefield. Christopher's match shot in 117 is for release. In the past, he released Kaito from his limits as a young duelist. In the present day, he's releasing Kaito from poison. The shot changes from the bright laboratory to the cold arctic field. As Christopher and Kaito's pasts are so intertwined with one another, the contrast between their present day selves are even greater. Kaito has moved on with new friends and rivals. Christopher, meanwhile, has reunited with his family, but still remains solitary. Two duelists, two destinies. Kajino's mastery of parallelism and contrast highlight the intricacies of human relationships in an anime meant to market cards to angsty teenagers. Just because a show has commercialistic intent doesn't mean it can't be art. Or it's just art to me because I've sunk so many years of my life into this show. Anyways, hate and subscribe. See you in the next video. Oh, and happy 5-5, five five, guys.